Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Casual Friday here on Digital Charcuterie. It's a very casual Friday. So much so I didn't even trim my beard or trim my hair today. We're just letting it all hang out. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're new here, like, subscribe, do all the youtube -y stuff. And hey, if you like me or if you like fantasy or both, I'm okay with both, maybe consider checking out my fantasy novel series. It's called We Were Wizards. That's the title right there. And that's the subtitle. I know I did it in a weird way. But this is We Were Wizards. It's a book I wrote and self-published that you can buy only on Amazon.com or .ca or .uk or wherever you live. Uh, this is the first book, the purple one. There's also a silver one somewhere. Where Here it is, which is the next one in the series, uh, Ghost of Wizards Past. So check out We Were Wizards if you like fantasy and fun and adventure and swords and magic and boomerangs because all of those things are in those books. But today is Casual Friday. Welcome back. I was away last week because I was in New York City uh, exploring New York for the first time in my life. That was a lifelong goal that I achieved and I got to see everything I wanted to see, which was mostly filming locations from the Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles movies. And yes, there will be some kind of video about it once I compile all the footage I made. It's just taking so long. Uh, I don't know when it'll be ready, but when it is, uh, my is, I'll probably have it up on my YouTube channel, the Andrew Fantasia YouTube channel, but that's way down the line. It's, it's a slow process to put that all together. For now though, we're gonna talk Indiana Jones, baby, because Indiana Jones 5, colon, The Dial of Destiny is coming out. Uh, well, it's out now, actually. Today's June 30th, so it is technically the release date. I have not seen it yet. I won't be seeing it till Tuesday, July 4th, but, I am coming here today to talk about it because I want to give everybody peace of mind. I want us all to breathe deep and relax. Because here's the thing, guys. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is going to be different from every other Indiana Jones movie. Therefore, it is going to be great. That's the conclusion I've come to. All these stupid early pre-screening negative reviews, they mean nothing anymore. They should, guys, we're at the point now where we should not put any stock in those at all. We shouldn't because that's just the internet, especially Twitter. It's just a den of negativity where people want things to fail so that they feel better about their own atrocious lives. But that's not what it's all about. Movies are art, movies are fun. We like them. Here on Digital Charcuterie, we love stuff. We're a positive channel. So we don't go in for that kind of thing. And there was plenty of awful stuff being said about Indiana Jones, just like there was plenty of awful stuff being said about The Flash and about Elemental and about Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Well, guess what? I saw all three of those movies and I thought they were A-OK. -okay. Uh, particularly The Flash was really, really good. It was a lot of fun. So these preconceived notions of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny being bad, we're going to lay them to rest today. And here's why. Like I said, Dial of Destiny is going to be different from every other Indiana Jones movie. And that is a red flag for people, right? We tend to, with legacy sequels, we go into them thinking, I want to feel like I felt with the originals, right? And I think that's where a lot of the genuine dislike for the movie from genuine people who actually said, hey, I didn't care for it, as opposed to Twitter trolls, people who genuinely walked out of Dial of Destiny and said, oh, I didn't care for that. First of all, I think those people are few and far between. And second of all, I think the ones who did, did so because they went in there, in there, wow, talking is easy. They went in there wanting to have a movie be shown to them that felt like Raiders or Temple of Doom or Last Crusade. But I think that's the problem, particularly with Indiana Jones. Just We're just talking about Indiana Jones here, the franchise. And I think the problem is people want, people have lived with that trilogy for so many years that it's lumped together in their brains as the Indiana Jones trilogy. And when King of the Crystal Skull felt different, they hated it. And now when Dial of Destiny feels different, they might be inclined to hate it too. But 
the thing about that original trilogy, guys, is every single one of those movies was different. So King of the Crystal Skull being different is not a bad thing. And Dial of Destiny being different, which I can guarantee it is, it is not going to feel like the first three movies whatsoever, that's not a bad thing either. So when I say they were different, what do I mean by that? What's, what am I talking about? Well, if you really look at those films, they are not a cohesive unit. Like you really have to be in the mood for a particular one, right? If you're in the mood for a Star War, you can throw on any Star War and you're getting Star Wars. That's how that franchise works. Indiana Jones, hmm, they don't work that way. Um, and you look at it individually like this. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Very gritty, very um, disturbing, bloody, pulp, 1930s serial kind of movie, right? That's what they made. They made Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, with uh, monkeys who murder people and then they get poisoned and people whose faces melt off and you know, Nazis getting caught in propellers. It is a very, we like to look at Temple of Doom as the dark movie, but I argue Raiders is the darkest one. Raiders is just, uh, it's a slow burn, very gritty experience. That's the kind of movie it is. And you watch it and you know you see Indy going up against Belloc, but it's more psychological warfare and Indy almost going to kill everybody, including Marion, because she's standing near that arc. Uh, but then he relinquishes and he puts that rocket launcher down because he can't bring himself to destroy A, the woman he loves, and B, such a priceless artifact. There's a lot of deep adult stuff going on in there, deep mature stuff, I should say, going on in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then you got your sequel. Super different. First of all, not only is it a prequel, which kind of flew under the radar, but Temple of Doom is a kid's movie. It is particularly a movie made for 10-year-old boys because what do you have? You have a small child, a young boy, I think short round, supposed to be like, 10 or 11, right, as the secondary hero. So right there, you're saying, hey, you kids watching this, you could be Indiana Jones's friend too. And that, it worked on me back then when I was seven and I watched that. I was like, hey, I could be just like Short Round. This is great. I love that kid. Uh, and I still love Short Round. He's awesome. But that movie takes a step backward in terms of maturity. This is no longer a dark, gritty, uh, adult story mature story now it's a story about oh reading bugs this is gross look how gross it is oh look at that girl she's so annoying and loud god girls are dumb <laughs> that's that's the uh the flavor that temple of doom gives us and i'm not saying this as a bad thing necessarily i do prefer raiders over doom but that's it's just it is what it is and yes, it is violent and scary. You do have people's hearts being ripped out and stuff like that. But the action and the violence and everything becomes more bananas in Temple of Doom. It goes from a quieter, slightly more down-to-earth story, you know, face-melting notwithstanding, to a completely cartoonish off-the-wall thing. And that, that is the key word here is it's cartoony. This feels like something that would happen in a Saturday morning cartoon, minus the blood. Uh, but I mean, Indiana Jones getting hypnotized by drinking voodoo juice, and then, you know, he turns, like, it's very cartoony. So that right there is a movie that is different from Raiders, right? And even the ending, the endings are so different. Raiders is about, this should be in a museum for people to see, but no, the United States government is going to take it and hide it away in a facility because there's this, dark bureaucracy going on and the hoarding of secrets and wanting to be the, the biggest government on the planet. There's a lot of mature themes in that movie. And then look at the ending of Temple of Doom. What's the ending of Temple of Doom? We brought all the kids back. The day is saved. Now I'm going to kiss this girl, but kissing is gross. So the character is going to go, ooh, look out. I'll kiss. That's the kind of movie it is. They are two extremely different films. And a lot of people didn't like Temple of Doom because it was different. So then along comes The Last Crusade, which is personally my favorite Indiana Jones film. Uh, and our initial thought 
what we've been trained to think is that the last crusade is a return to form is that it's back to being like raiders because there's nazis because there's no kitty stuff but that's an incorrect assumption it is not like raiders raiders was a much darker in terms of both cinematography and subject matter story and Last Crusade is not like that. It's not gritty. It, it's not uh, as mature, even though it is way more mature than Temple of Doom. With Last Crusade, what you get is a very stereotypical Steven Spielberg movie. It's glossy. It's bright. It's colorful. Uh, it's got a flashback of Indy as a young kid. And at its core, it's about the relationship between a man and his father and how they had a lot of issues growing up together and now they're trying to patch through those issues while there's a bunch of Nazis chasing them to the Holy Grail happening in the background. That's the kind of movie Last Crusade is. And it ends with a really great strong moral that the other ones don't exactly have where it's this pursuit of these objects is driving people to their deaths. And really at the end of the day, what is more precious, the Holy Grail or your relationship with your dad while you still have time to have one. That's what's going on there at the end of Last Crusade. And Indy chooses his dad. He chooses, you know, love and, and family over the grail, which is not what Elsa chose. And that's why she did. That's why Elsa fell down that pit of smoke, folks, right? So Last Crusade has uh, a nice moral, a beautiful family-friendly theme, a very Spielberg film altogether, right? So that original trilogy that we keep saying is so sacred because it's got its own flavor, it doesn't have its own flavor. It has its own three distinct flavors. It has a gritty, dark recreation of 1930s serials. It has a bananas, batshit crazy cartoon for 12-year-old boys. And it has a schmaltzy, glossy Steven Spielberg action film three very different movies. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull kind of combines a few of those things. It is still a very glossy Steven Spielberg film at the end of the day that is about family, except this time it's that same character forming a relationship, not with his father, but with his son. But on top of that, you have Indiana Jones moving into a new era. You have the idea at its core of this is a character who has lived in one era that we've known him for all that time. He has been of the 30s. And all of a sudden, with that one glorious shot where we see him standing on that hill looking at the mushroom cloud, it tells us right there, Indiana Jones has entered the atomic age. And what does that mean? What kind of adventures does he have in this world? Because it is a very different world to have adventures in. So we got a very different movie. And a lot of people hated that. I didn't love it at first either. I thought, oh God, I just saw that Indiana Jones movie and then Kingdom really grew on me as time went on. So now we're faced with Dial of Destiny, which is going to be a fifth flavor. And that's how we have to, that's what we have to keep in mind as we go into this. That's why it's going to be great and it's going to be fine and it's not going to be a bad movie because it's going to be its own flavor of an Indiana Jones film. If you go in there, and you say, I want it to have the same flavor as Raiders and Temple and Last Crusade. Raiders and Temple of Last Crusade do not have one flavor. They have three different ones. So you have to keep your expectations in check, yes, but not in a way of lowering them, just in a way of realizing what it is your tongue wants to taste. Because I guarantee you, Dial of Destiny is going to be the most high concept Indiana Jones film. It's going to be about dealing with the fact that he's an old man, way more so than Crystal Skull was, and it's going to deal with another new era because he is older, he's in a brand new era now. He's in the era of McCarthyism, I believe. Um, and we are also getting the end of the story. Uh, Indiana Jones has always played to its pulp serial strengths and pulp serial strengths include ending a story in a way where it says more adventures to come folks. Even though Last Crusade had a really beautiful ending that could have just been the ending, but I digress. Dial of Destiny is not going to have one of those more adventures to come kind of endings. It's going to 
just based on what I've heard and based on what I'm guessing, it's going to have a very final ending for Indiana Jones' story. Whether that means he dies or he just rides off into the sunset, but like for real this time, we don't know. I don't want to know until Tuesday night. But that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a new, different flavor of an Indiana Jones film. And I think it's going to push some high concepts the way that movies like Logan and movies like The Last Jedi pushed high concepts. And I know that's not going to be for everybody, but that's the flavor we're getting. And that's the flavor I'm excited for. So if you can wrap your head around this, and I know you can, if you can just keep track of the idea that this is a franchise with four different flavors, not with one giant lump and an outcast. It is really four different flavors of Indiana Jones we've gotten, and we're going to get an all new one. Keep that in mind. I promise you, I promise you, my friends, Dial of Destiny is going to rock your world. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, though, before we wrap up Casual Friday, I have a fan email question. This one comes from Rachel Smith. Thank you for writing in, Rachel. Rachel says, hi, DC. James Gunn says he's miles and miles from casting Batman. Who would you cast? I'd like Jensen Ackles or Josh Hutcherson. I like this question. Let me think about it for a moment as I sip some water here. Otherwise, I'd be coughing throughout this whole video. Um, Jensen Ackles or Josh Hutcherson? Well, I like the Jensen Ackles thing, Rachel. Uh, I can totally see that dude playing a great Batman. And the thing we have to keep in mind about this Batman is James Gunn has, I'm pretty sure, confirmed that it's going to be a story about him with his son Damien. So I'm imagining an older Batman, which is perfect. I'm cool with that because we've got a great younger Batman concurrently going on with Robert Pattinson, so we don't need kind of two of the same flavor there. Um, so Jensen Ackles, he would be sweet. He would be sweet as Bruce Wayne. He, I could really see him playing that up uh, in, a, in a real groovy way. Uh, and the idea, we've seen him play off, just based on what I've seen in Supernatural, he plays off his brother, and his brother in that show was a bit more of a goody two-shoes than him, if I remember right. I've only seen seasons one and two. Um, so... We know he can play against a character who is more naive than him and have a good rapport with a character like that, which would be the issue here with Bruce and Damien, right? Damien would be this naive kid who's like, I want to be Robin. I want to go fight some bad guys. And Batman's like, slow down, kid. You have to learn stuff first. So that's going to be a really fun dynamic. Right? Dynamic. Um, and Jensen Ackles is somebody who could pull that off. Uh, honestly, Rachel, I have not given a whole lot of thought to who I would like to see take on the cowl uh, in this particular case. I feel, though, that Jensen Ackles would probably be up there for me. Like, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head that I would really like to see play that part. Um, Jensen is also very, like, square built, right? When I think of Bruce Wayne, I think of that animated series with the square jaw and the coiffed black hair. That's why I think Christian Bale made such a great Bruce Wayne in particular. He was a great Batman, but he was an even better Bruce Wayne because he just looked like Bruce Wayne. Um, and I think Ackles could pull that off. Uh, other than that, who else could I see playing Bruce the Moose Wayne? Uh, that's what I call him because we're buddies, uh, world fraternity buddies. That's not real, Don't those are lies. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, depending on how old they want to go, maybe I could see, no, nah, you know what? Never mind. I was going to go down a weird road with, uh, like a Liam Neeson type, but I think that might be older than they want for, for this role. Uh, granted, we've not had too many old man Batman stories in film, except for The Flash, where it actually worked pretty well. I liked that. But I don't think that's what James Gunn is going for. So Jensen Ackles, very safe bet. Uh, and I can see him in the cape and cowl, and I think it would work wonders. So I'm going to piggyback on that, Rachel. I'm sorry. I know you're probably expecting some other answer out of left field, but really, this is not 
a Batman that has been on my radar enough for me to think about it because I'm still so wrapped up and invested in the Matt Reeves Batman movies now. Like, I just want more of those. Give me like a trilogy of those like right now in my face. So maybe if I give it some more thought down the line, I'll have some other conceptual uh, theory of who could be in that cowl. But I really like Jensen Ackles. So I'm going to stick with that one. Uh, I'm, I'm riding that wagon with you, Rachel. So that has been Casual Friday for today. I have been Andrew Fantasia. You have been magnificent as always. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Until then, may you be the masters of your own universe.